Drama City Productions presets. You are plugged in for the Podcast Wrestling Society, where you can get dynamic weekly pro wrestling and MMA related content. Give us a follow on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram at P-O-D-W-R-E-S Society so that you can stay in the know. Faith is the place and the sky is the limit. And if you like what you hear, give us a five-star review and hit that subscribe button. Woo! 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 Now, your host, he is the one and only Troy Adams. This is the Podcast Wrestling Society, where we cover all the haps with the graps from the Summerfest weekend. Thank you for joining the Society. I am your loving leader, benevolent host, Midwest monster, and the intellectual savior of dem asses, Troy Adams. And joining the Society today, back again by minority demand, is the Kurt Hawkins to my Zack Ryder, woo, 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 you know it, is Kyle. What up, Kyle? Well, I'm saying I haven't won a match in kind of about two years. Give or take, something like that, yeah. yeah. About on par. <laughs> well, you know, we talked a couple weeks ago about uh, what our predictions were going to be for the weekend. I think I, I was a little off with some stuff. Yeah, I think I was too. Yeah, and... I mean, the, some things went like how I wanted them to go. How some things went how I expected them to go, and some things, I don't know. Uh, all in all, I thought SummerSlam, even though you know the the marks online wanted to poop on it, I actually really liked SummerSlam. I I I, I didn't hate on it. Yeah, I, I liked it for the most part as well. I didn't see too many flaws with it. Yeah, I didn't get all the predictions uh, correct, and then the whole show I think wasn't like the greatest show ever. Um, uh, SummerSlam, I mean, but I think it was, especially compared to most pay per views we've been seeing lately. I think it's been really good, or I, I yeah. think it was really good. Yeah, I mean all the the big shows this year, you know, WrestleMania, Royal Rumble, and now. Um, SummerSlam. I mean, they've. It seems like they put a lot of some extra effort into it, and those have been the best ones so far this year. I think. Yeah, I mean, on one hand, you know, WrestleMania was kind of swerve a mania, and it was, it was, it was a good show, um, all in all. But you know, I I think SummerSlam was was really good. I think you know, Greg Greg and Ramon were there, and I think they got to see some really good quality stuff live. Um, you know, and Rhonda had her moment and everything. We'll, we'll, we'll get into the card more, um, here in a bit. I, I really dug, uh, NXT. I, I thought, n not that I really had any doubts for it, but I thought it was a really good show. What, what, uh, what did you, you, you said you didn't wa get to watch live, right? I, I didn't get to, and I haven't had time to see it yet, but all the, Takeover event I've seen have been great, and from what I've heard, this was another one. So, man, not, not, not a real big surprise there. Yeah, I mean, it was great. You uh, definitely got to go back and watch. For all of you at home, if you have not watched, definitely watch. And you're, I mean, obviously, you're going to get some spoilers on the show if you don't know what happened yet. And I don't know why you're listening if you haven't uh watched yet unless however at the end of the show and i'm going to tease it in the description and everything so you might be listening for this the last segment of the show uh i want to go over because all in is this weekend i want to kind of touch on the card and what to expect there and my predictions for the show if i have any and kind of talk about a recent video game that uh, that I just bought yesterday. It is Fire Pro Wrestling World, uh, speaking of New Japan and the indies and whatnot, and I kind of want to talk about that a little bit when we uh, right before we close out the show, just to 
let people know what what to expect if you are on the fence about buying the game. But real quick, I just want to let everybody know if you are looking for alternate ways to listen to the podcast, there are plenty different ways. We are on Wooshka. Uh, that's what I always post a link to that. I try to post all the links on social media now. I used to only post the Wooshka link, but I try to keep up with everything now. You can listen on Wooshka, iTunes, Spotify, TuneIn, Stitcher, and YouTube. Uh, I have not been keeping up with the archives because I was on vacation for a whole week, and that kind of threw off my whole schedule. I'm going to try to get back into it. I have a day off tomorrow. I'm going to try to get the uh, the archived last two archived shows up on YouTube. So stay uh, stay tuned for that. Also, if you want some podcast Wrestling Society swag, I will be putting some new stuff up here real soon. But go to redbubble.com forward slash people forward slash pod rest society. You can get mugs. You can get travel mugs. You can get shirts, tank tops, clocks. Uh, I know that's a a weird thing, but you can. Uh, A couple items. You can get uh, phone cases or stickers or what have you. And if we don't have an item there that you want, like that you want to select a certain item or you want to design on something that we don't offer currently on there, let me know. I can change it for you. If you want to rock some podcast Wrestling Society swag, I will hook you up any way you need. Just hit me up on Twitter, Facebook, Instagram. Uh, the handle on all of those is Pod Rest Society. Same for Redbubble. It's redbubble.com forward slash people forward slash Pod Rest Society. P O D W R E S Society. You think I plugged enough stuff there, Kyle, at the opening of the show? Boy, I tell you what, I don't know if there's anything else left to plug right now after all that. Well, we have a couple things to mention uh, later on in the show. I'll get to them. I don't want to overload everybody, you know, right now. Right, uh, last thing I did want to plug before we officially get into NXT here, and like you said, you didn't watch, but I did, so we'll run down a little bit of what happened. Uh, I didn't watch, but I know what happened, so... Right, right. But, uh, yeah, we'll run down a little bit of what happened and how it happened and et cetera, et cetera. And for our... I think this this is our first pay-per-view review of the the reboot so i figure we're going to change it up a little bit and how most people give stars to matches i i'm starting i'm going to rate matches and instead of star ratings well i'll tell you about it here in a little bit it's uh it i i think it's funny i i think it's a good rating system but uh yeah we're not going the dave Meltzer route well not exactly but i'll fill you in here in a minute uh, last couple plugs here. We are we have some exciting news. You might be listening to us right now, or clips of us right now on wrestlingwithwrestling.com. It's a new site that we have a partnership with and we are involved with. Uh, they have the latest wrestling news from WWE, Impact Wrestling, New Japan, Ring of Honor, and the rest of all the indies on their website. Also, you can listen to this great podcast right now and get interviews with wrestlers like Brian Cage of Impact Wrestling, Joe Hendry of Impact Wrestling, and quite a few others. And you can listen to international indie, or you can watch international indie wrestling videos and get other podcasts like the Triple Threat Podcast with the franchise, Shane Douglas, who I am personally a huge mark for, even though he's from Boo, Pittsburgh. But I'm a huge mark for Shane Douglas. Uh, also, listen to WWE Main Event Curtain Jerkin with friend of the show, Jacob Grandi. So check that out. WrestlingWithWrestling.com And we will get to our own personal Drama City Productions network here soon but uh, again i don't want to overload you front load you here at the beginning of the show but definitely like i said check out wrestlingwithwrestling.com they got news they got wrestling videos they got wrestling podcasts they got wrestling interviews it's your overload of wrestling for the week and of course 
you can check us out there. So, why not? Okay. You ready to dive into some NXT, Kyle? Absolutely. All right. Take over Brooklyn 4, <clears throat> live from the Barclays Center. I was at the very first ever TakeOver Brooklyn, so this show holds special meaning to me. I've always been a big fan of the Brooklyn show, even though they always make, you know, the TakeOver before WrestleMania special and big and whatever. This one almost seems to me, and I don't know about to you, but this one almost seems like their big show of the year in NXT. I mean, does it seem that way to you? I don't know. It seems like every takeover of the scene that we don't get as many of them as we do, you know, main roster pay per views. It seems like they always put a lot of effort into it and make it seem like a big deal. So I don't know. I haven't really noticed that with like individual shows, but oh well, absolutely. I mean, they always make takeover feel special, but I don't know. This one, this one to me seems like they put more effort into this one, like a WrestleMania on the main roster. That just that's the way it seems to me, and and Greg was kind of saying the same thing. I think it's because this was the first ever takeover outside of Full Sail, so I don't know. Uh, it might just be bias on my part, but I I, I can't tell. Let's run through um, the matches here, and I will give. And, and, and I'll just tell you all what my rating system is here. Instead of stars, uh, we're going to parody the star system, actually. We're going to give Uncle Dave's. Oh, boy. Oh, yeah. So instead of one star, it would be one Uncle Dave. So it's... Like an insult to anybody, but okay. Yeah. <laughs> you get an Uncle Dave. Well, I don't... Well, that's that's enough for all the stars. One one Uncle Dave is worth a million stars. All the stars, Kyle. <laughs> okay. So I am honoring these these great workers, wrestlers, sports entertainers by giving their matches Uncle Dave's. So keep that in mind, people. But let's get right into it. The opening match of the night. It was the Undisputed Era defending their recently re-won, uh, easy word for me, I don't I don't think that's a real word, but I just made it up, uh, it NXT, now. Yeah, NXT Tag Team Titles against Mustache Mountain, that's Trent Seven and Tyler Bate. Tyler Bate, by the way, has been confirmed for WWE 2K19, so how about that? Yeah, we've... They had, in last year's game, they had the Europe, or the, uh... The UK title. The UK title, I said thank you. Uh, yeah. yeah. they had it in the game, but they didn't have anybody that... I know. Even, it... ...is even in the picture for it, so now they finally got, you know... Well, they've confirmed uh, Tyler Bate, uh, Pete Dunne, and both of their... Uh, the Pete Dunne model looks really good. The, the Tyler Bate model is so-so. I was hoping for Trent Seven. They still haven't announced the whole roster yet, so he, you know, there's still a possibility. But we yeah, shall kinda, see. Kind of late on that, but they usually do that, like, like SummerSlam weekend or around SummerSlam. And they're yeah, kinda... yeah, they do, and they haven't really. They're super late because the game comes out. Um, what sep- October ninth? Yeah, October ninth. Yeah, so they only have a month to really drop all the news everything has just been kind of like leaking out here and there nothing has like really been dropped like previous years so i don't know um feels like they're not really heavily pushing this game which is i don't know i mean they are but they aren't it's an odd situation but anyway <clears throat> the event opened with the undisputed era defending the nxt tag titles against mustache mountain i am using Wikipedia for my rundowns, by the way. Uh, O'Reilly and Strong performed the total elimination on uh, Trent Seven to retain the titles. After the match, the War Raiders, Hanson and Rowe, attacked Strong and O'Reilly, ending the attack by performing Fallout on Kyle O'Reilly. So it, it would appear that the Undisputed Era's next challengers are War Machine. And I love that. I, I've 
or I'm sorry, War Raiders. I'm <laughs> they were a war machine in the Indies. My bad. But I've always been a fan of the War Raiders slash War Machine. Greg is not a big proponent of theirs, but I think they look good here in NXT, and I think they're a good fit. And I'm anxious to see what they do against uh, the Undisputed Era. So, look for that. It's going to be a fun feud. Oh, yeah. Well, especially because it's, you know, little guys versus big guys, and that always makes for a fun feud, especially, you know, their styles and everything, because they're not typical little guys against typical big guys either. So, the, uh, the tag match, by the way, went for 18 minutes and 6 seconds. I rated the match three and a half Uncle Dave's. Yeah, half of an Uncle Dave. Yep. Yeah, so that's only half of Infinity Stars, I guess. I'm si- We're working out the kinks with the system here, but three and a half Uncle Dave's for the tag team match. Uh, and this, by the way, is out of five. There is no six, seven star bullcrap like Dave breaking the scale. This is... Uh, this is one to five. You get what you get. Or I guess technically zero to five, because, you know, you could get less than one if your match sucks that bad. And we'll get to some of those later on, but uh, regardless, it, none of them on this card. The next match, the Velveteen Dream versus EC3. EC3 looked super amped, super hyped, and it's really weird to see him playing a babyface. I love EC3, but it's just, it's odd. I don't know, his character doesn't lend itself well to being a babyface, in my opinion. It was still a great performance, still a great match. Uh, let's see, in the end, Dream executed a cartwheel Death Valley Driver, uh, or I guess he calls it the Dream Valley Driver, on the apron, and, uh, per, or no, I'm sorry, he hit that, and then... He was on the apron, and he nailed the Purple Rainmaker onto EC3 while he's on the apron. It was weird, but cool, and he got the win. His tights had airbrushed on the back. Uh, Call me up Vince. So... Yeah, that kind of created a little bit of controversy, but... Yeah. Uh, I would love to see both of those guys called up. I think... EC3 is one of those guys that, while he's really good, I think, just like I said, I don't think he lends himself to being a babyface very well, kind of like Bobby Roode's okay with it, but I think he's a much better heel. Uh, I don't think EC3 lends himself, his in-ring style lends itself to NXT super well. I think he, he would look better and do much better on the main roster, but... I don't know. I've, I've heard a couple other people say that as well. This match, I also gave three and a half Uncle Dave's. Very good match. Um, not the best I've ever seen, but really good. Next match, we get Adam Cole, baby, defending the NXT North American Championship against the one and only Ricochet. This match was crazy. Ricochet went for a lion salt and in midair, upside down, got super kicked in the face. Uh, there were a bunch of other crazy freaking spots. Ricochet eventually got the 630 senton on Cole for the win. Ricochet is your new NXT North American champion, the second ever. This match went for, let's see, 15 minutes, 19 seconds. By the way, that last match went for 15 minutes, 3 seconds. So, some longer matches on TakeOver, which I like. They don't overload the card. This one I gave four Uncle Daves. It was a fantastic match. I love these two dudes. So, congratulations to uh, King Ricochet on his victory, even though I love Adam Cole, baby. It appears as though Adam Cole is going to be starting a feud with Keith Lee. So that will be interesting because Keith is a very large, very beefy man. Big sweaty man. And Adam Cole is rather small. So well, Vince is going to let him on the main roster here pretty soon if that's the case. 
Yeah, I, well, I, I, I really hope that they have the Undisputed Era drop the titles and get called up with him, like, as, as a whole, because I think they could do really well as a group on the main roster. But they at least got to keep him around to throw him into um, uh, the, what am I thinking of? Help me out here, the Cages. Um, war Games. War Games, yeah. Yeah. They they at least got to keep them around for War Games one more time before calling them up. So, we'll see. It's going to be when Survivor Series is? Yeah, so November. I don't know who they're going to face. Um, maybe a makeshift team. We shall see. And I don't know if they're going to do the three teams again this year, because I'm thinking it's like, well, who the hell would it be? But, like I said, you never know. It it could be the War Raiders and Keith Lee on one team. That would be a big old beefy team of men. But, well, like I said, we'll see. Next we get to Shayna Baszler, the Queen of Spades, defending the NXT Women's Championship against Kyrie Sane. This match went for 13 minutes, 37 seconds. Kyrie Sane gets the win um, with, let's see, the match ends with Baszler attempting the Kirifuda clutch, but Sane countered into a roll-up and won the title. I gave this match, this was my lowest rated match on the card, I gave it two and a half Uncle Dave's, but at the same time, I thought it was a really, it was a pretty good match. Probably Shayna's best that I've seen so far in NXT. So, Kyrie really brought out the best in her. They had a really good, uh, you know, Shayna, I think Shayna was on her game, and Kyrie was really on her game. Both of them looked great in more ways than one. And this was a uh, rematch of the finals of the May Young Classic from last year. Yep. And it ended the same way. Familiar with one another. Yeah. Yeah, And it ended the same way the last one did with Kyrie getting the win. But this time, instead of a big old trophy, she gets a big old title belt. It's a championship, pal. It's not a belt. God dang it. I think think that's the right move. It's about time they, you know, did something good with Kyrie saying it. From what I've seen from her, I've been pretty impressed. And and I'm glad she's got that title belt. Hopefully, it's a good run for her. Yeah, same here. I think she's really talented, really charismatic. The crowd loves her. I don't know how she'll translate on the main roster. You know, that's um, still yet to be seen. But for right now, she's great. Let's uh, let's get right into the main event, shall we? It is Tommaso Ciampa defending the NXT Championship in a last-man-standing match against Johnny Gargano. This match went for 33 minutes. 42 seconds. Crazy long. And let's uh, let's kind of go through the, the rundown here on Wikipedia. Uh, Ciampa performed an air raid crash on Gargano through an announced table who stood at the, and stood, stood up at the nine count, excuse me. Uh, Ciampa performed three Project Ciampas on Gargano. However, Gargano stood up at the nine count. Gargano performed a super kick on Ciampa who was seated on a chair, and then Ciampa performed a lifting double underhook face buster on Gargano onto the steel steps, but Gargano still stood up at a nine count. Gargano performed a slingshot DDT on Ciampa onto the exposed floorboards of the ring, but Ciampa stood up at the nine count. Ciampa performed a running knee smash using a chair through a barricade, or through the barricade, on Gargano and buried Gargano under the rubble from the timekeeper's area, only for Gargano to stand up in the nine count once again. Gargano performed a super kick on Ciampa, who fell through two tables on the exposed concrete. However, Ciampa used a crutch to stand up at the nine count on the stage. Gargano threw Ciampa into the LED screen and applied the Gargano escape. Gargano used handcuffs to bind Ciampa to the stage and began to perform super kicks on Ciampa. In the climax, Gargano performed a running knee smash on Ciampa but fell onto some production equipment. Ciampa stood up at the 9 count. Gargano could not stand up by the 10 count, thus Ciampa retained the title. After the match, medical personnel tended to Ciampa, uh, Gargano 
as Ciampa uh, silently taunted him with the belt. And that ends TakeOver. And I assume this feud. Some people were trying to say, oh, Gargano was legit injured, and they changed the finish of this match on the fly. I'm like, how big of a freaking mark are you, man? Like, really? It's like, oh, yeah, they just changed this on the fly. Let me tell you, like, eat me. Come on. You've, you've got to be insane to sit there and honestly think, oh, I'm an insider. <laughs> I'm an insider. I know things. You don't know anything. Shut up. Ah, but anyway, I gave this match four and a half Uncle Dave's. Uh, it was crazy. It was a no-sell contest, but it was great. I love all their stuff. They just, they, they do everything. They hit each other with everything but the kitchen sink. It's just, it's, their, their matches are fantastic. So. The question is, what more can they do with these two? Nothing, I, I would did. say. It may have, that's probably an end of the feud. I mean, the way this is going, I mean, there have been a few matches where I thought, well, that could have been it right there, but. Be sure we start getting another match from him here, this last man standing match. So, Well, this, I mean, yeah, I mean, it's a last man standing match, which means it should be the blow off. Plus, it's the third match. Uh, Ciampa won the last two. He's the champ. So Gargano just needs to ride off into the sunset. And I, I don't know if they're going to play like the underdog thing with uh, Ciampa, or I'm sorry, Gargano. What I did hear was that Ciampa is getting theme music finally. So that's a thing. Look forward to that. That I'm just walking out there to a chorus of booze. Yeah, and just very vulgar chants from the crowd. Yeah. But yeah, so um, that was TakeOver. Very good show. If none of you have seen it, go out of your way to watch it on the WWE Network faux show. I enjoyed it. I, I always enjoy TakeOver. I don't think I've ever walked away from a takeover going, man, that sucked. No, I haven't. Yeah, it's, <clears throat> the talent's great, the booking's great, the stories are great. It's all, it, it's it's just fantastic. I, I, I can't talk about it enough. It's fantastic stuff. But anyway, that about wraps it up for takeover. Uh, we're going to take a quick break here, but before we do, real quick, uh, to tell you about where we're coming from here, Definitely check out Drama City Productions Podcast Network. That is what we are on. That's our uh, podcast network here. You can hit them up at DCP Network on Twitter or at Drama City Productions on Instagram or search for them on Facebook for show. Go to dramacityproductions.com. Has all the podcasts you you know on the network that you want to listen to. Some great ones that we're going to let you know about here soon. Also, this great podcast, Chino's Hip Hop Stop, where you can get the latest on hip hop and rap, R&B and soul music, the NBA, NFL, esports, style, celebrities, games, and much, much more. They talk about Chino's Hip Hop Stop, and we're going to tell you about some other ones here soon. You can hear more about the regular stories and small town mentality podcast in our upcoming promo breaks, which we are going to take one right now and let you know about one of those great podcasts here on the Drama City Productions Podcast Network, dramacityproductions.com. We'll be right back. Drama City Productions presents. Hey, it's Ben here, host of the Regular Stories Podcast, a podcast where I interview interesting people about their lives. These are not celebrities. They're not the elite. These are regular people, and these are their stories. You can follow us on Facebook at Regular Stories and on Instagram at Regular Stories. We are everywhere that you can get a podcast. We are on iTunes, Google Play, Stitcher, TuneIn, just about everywhere else. Look up Regular Stories Podcast. All right, y'all, we're back from our break to uh, talk some more WWE, uh, this time from it's from SummerSlam weekend. We have moved on past NXT. We're now talking the big show, 
we're not I'm, I'm not talking about the, the wrestler Paul White. I'm talking about the big show of SummerSlam 2018 from the Barclays Arena. Yeah, he wasn't on the card. Yeah. Uh, I, I don't know if I'm upset about that. <laughs> I, no offense to Big Show, but my God, just... Uh, anyway, this is... He's had a hell of a career. I mean, you got to give him... Oh, well, <laughs> yeah. For sure. I mean, no disrespect, but, you know, he's... Not what he he's not the giant he once was, let's just say that. No. Uh real quick before we dive into SummerSlam, just letting uh, reminding you all if you go to redbubble.com forward slash people fo- uh, forward slash pod rest society, P O D W R E S Society. I want to tell you about some of the shirts you can buy. I told you I'm gonna put some new ones up here real soon. Uh you can get one with one of the podcast logos on it. Uh you can get ones that are about the list. One just uh, says, what's the list, bro? And it's in Jersey Shore lettering, so check that out. Uh, one, one of my personal favorites, it says, Uncle Dave says, plans changed. And it's got five stars below it. And it's in Hulk Hogan bro- uh, colors, brother. Speaking of Hulk Hogan, we've got uh, Hobo Mania running wild. If you want to show your Hulk Hogan slash... Hobo Championship Wrestling Pride. We've got Hobos Still Rule in the Hulk Hogan style lettering. You can get one with the HCW Hobo Championship Wrestling logo on it. You can get another one. Uh, It's uh, one of the fake HCW shows in WrestleMania lettering. It says, A Dayton with Destiny, which is an actual thought-up name for a show and below in parentheses it says yeah Dayton which is what Greg and Ramon always shout every time I mention the word Dayton you get uh, you can get hobo effing wrestling uh, in the style of the ECW lettering uh, somewhat you can get uh, the the one I just call it the mark letter shirt it's written in purple crayon with backwards some backwards letters on it and it is a letter to Vince McMahon about how much they dislike his product. You wear that around on your shirt. And there's one that somebody we know said this, and we make references to it on the podcast. He didn't know what the word avid meant, and he insisted he did. It says, I don't know much about wrestling. I'm only an avid fan. (laughs) We have one with a blurred-out face, but... You know, you you can see what the guy looks like, and it just says, The Look Bro, when we reference people with The Look Bro. And, of course, last but not least, we have, We'll set him on fire, then he's gone forever, bro. And it's in flaming letters, and it's in reference to something allegedly said by, by Vince Russo. When Kane said that if he lost a Stone Cold in a first blood match, he would set himself on fire. And they asked him about it, and he said, we'll set him on fire, and then he's gone forever, bro. So we reference that quite often on the podcast. A, an alleged quote by Vinny Ruru himself. Check it out. It's a, I, I think it's... These are some great quality logos you can put on your merch, brah. But that is just the humble opinion of this guy right here. You ready to get into some SummerSlam, Kyle? Oh, yes. After I'm done peddling my wares for all of you, that's right, I'm just a simple man that would like you to pay me for my merchandise. That's good. Did you watch the pre-show? Yes. Cool. I actually watched the pre-show live. I watched some of the show live... Um, I saw two of the three matches. I almost did this entirety. I missed out on the... Uh, I, 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 get, I got to see the finish to the Cruiserweight match. I was in and out of my room at the time, so... Uh, yeah, I don't think you were missing a whole lot with that one. There were three matches on the pre-show. Let's break them down here. The first one, it was Andrade, Cien Almas, and Zelina Vega versus Rusev and Lana. Uh, this match... In the climax, Vega pinned Lana with a roll-up using the ring ropes as leverage to win the match. Aiden English did not get involved, so that was a change. That was surprising. I think a lot of people were calling for English to go out there and 
trying to help Juan and Ursa, but ended up screwing him over in the process. But no, he stayed backstage, and it was just a straight up mixed tag match and with a not so, you know, yeah, controversial ending. It's just, and I believe was it, it was on the SmackDown two nights later. Didn't English actually help uh, Rusev pick up the win over Almas? Yes. Yeah. So it was actually a. I think it was a rematch from what we saw. I think it was another mixed tag. And mm, yeah. Rusev and Lana ended up going over there. Yeah. So. so. There you go. And this match wasn't anything to write home about. It was Lana, I will say, is vastly improving in the ring. Zelina Vega is entertaining. I don't know how much she can do. They don't let her do a whole lot. Uh, might be for the best. Or she might be great. I don't know. I gave this one one half of an Uncle Dave. So that's what I, I, I rated this one. It, it, it was, was so-so. I was going to say this one. All the matches on the pre-show, it was, if you missed it, you didn't miss a whole lot. No. It was just there. Yeah, it was, it, I mean, it was just kind of there. Uh, next, we get Cedric Alexander defending the Cruiserweight Championship against Drew Gulak. Drew is in his red, white, and blue, almost uh, Apollo Creed-style trunks. Uh, but they weren't boxing shorts, they were just trunks. They actually had a pretty good match, uh, all in all. I, I enjoyed it. In the end, Alexander pinned Gulak with a roll-up to retain the title out of nowhere. I gave this one two and a half Uncle Dave's, actually. It was my highest rated match on the pre-show. Yeah, the, the outcome of that match, I was kind of uh, was quite surprised that they had uh, Alexander retain because he's had the belt for, what, since take, since... Um, it's been a while. Uh, when did he get it, like, last WrestleMania? Year. The pre-show to WrestleMania, he got the... Oh, yeah, that's right, he did. That's I forgot they had a tournament for it, and he won. That's That's, you're right. Um, the tournament, bro. We're gonna we're gonna strip everybody of the belts. We're gonna have tournaments, bro. So, yeah, but they did uh, they did strip Enzo Amore, and they had a tournament, and I got to see him beat uh, Mustafa Ali live on the WrestleMania pre-show. So, they are really driving it home that nobody gives a damn about these guys, though, by consistently putting them on the pre-show, though. Yeah, they put them on the pre-show. They don't even have, like the cruiserweights don't even have any any segments on Raw anymore. It's all exclusive to Two Hundred Five Live. And yeah, I and they're not. Don't take the time. I don't take the time to watch Two Hundred Five no. Live, and so no, I don't believe they're driving traffic to Two Hundred Five Live. I really don't. I don't think anybody. I mean, I will say this. I mean, if you watch social media. And if you or if you pay attention to social media, a lot of people rave about 205 Live and the match quality. And I've seen some good matches on that show. I just huh, I don't have that much time throughout the week to dedicate to yeah. three hours of Raw, two hours of SmackDown, an hour of NXT, an hour of 205 Live. I just oh my gosh. And then if I want to keep up with anything else, it's a struggle. So I just mm. I got to pick and choose, I guess. But either way, this was a good match. I like I mean, both these guys. Of, I, mean, I mean, we said it, you know, a lot of times on this show. There's a lot of talent in that cruiserweight division. They're just oh, absolutely. Not doing a lot to, you know, for people to see it. Right. Yeah. It is. It is a good division. You know, um, on the whole, it's 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 pretty good. Next, we've got the B team defending the. Uh, Raw Tag Team Championships against The Revival. Yeah. This wasn't a terrible match, but I don't know. It seemed kind of sloppy. Yeah. Not that everything has to be beautiful, because then it definitely looks rehearsed. But I don't know. Like, it just seems sloppy at times. Uh, Dawson attempted to pin Curtis Axel with a small package. And then Dallas got hung up on the top rope by... Um, Dash Wilder, and he fell backwards into the pile, turned him over, and next thing you know, Axel reversed, was, you know, reversing the small package and pinned Dawson. The B team, B team, yeah, 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 retains the Raw Tag Team titles. And how many times have we seen the finish to a B team match like that to where it looks like they're about to get pinned and like 
somebody accidentally gets knocked into them and ends up reversing the pinfall, and that's how it goes. Yeah, well, I think I think they're putting over the fact that these guys can't really, you know, they they can't really win like very well. You know, they're like they're kind of they're they're good, but they're more lucky than good. But I think that's how they defended the uh, the titles against uh, Matt Hardy and uh, Bray Wyatt on the episode Raw that we went to. Yeah, I believe so. Yeah, some something to that effect. It's it's always they win by luck, you know. So they they get that last minute hurrah. This match I gave uh let's see two Uncle Daves. It wasn't a bad match, wasn't a great match. It was just kind of it it was a match. But they followed up um I don't remember what they did the next night on Raw, but I I, I know this past Raw that just happened uh like they keep getting matches. The freaking Revival beat them. And oh, what happened last week? Um, it was like two, in the, two one-on-one matches with the two teams. It was you're right. Yeah, I think it was um, Dawson beat uh, I want to say Axel, and then then Dallas got beat by um, Dash Wilder. I think that's how it went. But I know the uh, revival went over about the times. So. Right, yeah, I, I, okay, it's starting to come back to me now. They did, yeah, they did do that, so they had another match for non-title this week, and the Revival won, and then they said that the tag team division was becoming a joke because of the B team, and they were going to take the Raw tag titles and bring prestige to them. They finally, you know, were able to stand tall, and they used their top guys outline and got the F out, so... That was cool to see. Um, I, can't I love really the revival. Disagree with that statement, saying that divisions become a joke. Yeah, I mean, I love the B team. I think they're a cool team, but the revival, man, they're probably one of the best tag teams in the world, if not the mm-hmm. best. I don't know. They're 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 fantastic. Getting into the actual card here, uh, the first match of the night was the Intercontinental Title match, which was shocking to me, but. It was a great opener. The uh, The actual pay-per-view opened with Dolph Ziggler, accompanied by Drew McIntyre, defending the Intercontinental Championship against Seth Rollins, accompanied by Dean Ambrose. McIntyre sent Ambrose into the steel steps at ringside, distracting Rollins and allowing Ziggler to perform the zigzag on Rollins for a near fall. In the end, as McIntyre attempted to interfere, Ambrose hit dirty deeds on McIntyre. Rollins performed the super kick and then the stomp on Rollins to regain the title for a second time. He is now a two-time Intercontinental Champion. I gave this match three and a half Uncle Dave's. Very good match. Yeah, I mean, I don't think it's... Well, I mean, it is, but I mean, it would just be hard to believe that you could see a Dolph Ziggler, Seth Rollins match and not like it. Yeah, these two tear the house down every time. Uh, they, they're they great. It's kind of unfortunate to see Dolph lose the title. He was great with it. He even had the, the a picture of the title on his crotch of his uh, of his tights, kind of Rick Rude-like. Yeah, yeah I noticed that, too. Like, what... Yeah, so that was cool. Uh, but, yeah, Rollins got the win. Speaking of which, Rollins was dressed as Thanos. So he let out his inner nerd for two big shows in a row. Because, because he was dressed as, and forgive me, I don't watch Game of Thrones, but I guess he, I guess he was the Ice King for WrestleMania, and for SummerSlam he was Thanos. He was and, the Ice King. Yeah, from from uh, Game of Thrones. And they yell "Burn it down" in this entrance music. It has something. Yeah, it was weird because it, it was like fire and ice, I guess. Because if you look, if you go back and look at the the Tron. He had, like, icicles and whatever all over the place, and then it turns to fire for that burn-it-down part, and then it goes back to ice. So it was that was pretty cool. I, I, I liked that. And the fact that they actually had fire pyro for him, that was pretty sweet. I, I wasn't expecting it, but, yeah. But anyway, uh, yeah, Seth Rollins, I can't remember what he did the next night on Raw... Help! Uh, could, did he do any? Oh, well, I I know the last thing he did, which we'll we'll get to later. But I don't. 
He did I something. He had, I don't think he had an actual match. I know he was at ringside with Dean Ambrose. Ambrose took one off Ziggler in a really good match. Ah, and... oh, that's right, yeah. Okay, so he was he was there, but he wasn't, you know, doing anything much. So they continue their, their fighting with uh, Ambrose and Rollins against Dolph and Drew. <clears throat> and this... We'll, we'll we'll get to their continued feud here in a moment later. Um, you know when we get later on in the show. Next, we move on to the next tag title match. They got this one out of the way early. It was the Bludgeon Brothers defending the uh, tag team titles or SmackDown tag team titles against the New Day, uh, which this time was Big E and Xavier Woods. The match ended with when Rowan struck Woods and Big E with a mallet. Thus, the New Day won via disqualification. However, the Bludgeon Brothers retained the titles. I will say, I I gave this match two Uncle Daves, like the last tag title match. However, I thought it was a probably the best Bludgeon Brothers match I've seen. Yeah, this was a, this thing was really hard hitting. Oh yeah, a lot of physicality in this match, and this was just a straight up tag team match. It wasn't. What we saw uh, the following SmackDown, which we'll get to here. But oh yeah, yeah, it was it was a great match, and uh, we got to see the tricep meet. These two, these four, just beat the beat the tar out of each other, and unfortunately, Rowan got hurt in the match. Yeah. So. It seems like that always happens between Rowan and Harper. It's like one of them will get seems like one of them will get hurt and then they'll come back and then the other one gets injured. It's like well, it's because we saw that all the time when they were in the Wyatt family. Yeah, they they can't keep it together. They can't get momentum. Like I don't know, they can't get going. Basically, it's really annoying. But. Instead of continuing their feud, they have a random rematch for, well, I guess it wasn't random because, you know, the New Day won via disqualification. So they have their rematch on SmackDown, and the New Day wins. And no disqualification match. Yeah. It was it was good. Uh, if I recall, it wasn't very long. I Although I can't, I don't know, it was two weeks ago, so I, I don't remember. It was a decent week match it was the main event of the night oh yeah that okay i'm thinking of yeah you're right uh main event of the night yeah they and the new day are now your five time tag team champions of the world and because of that this week they brought out king booker who came out to uh, honor them and do spinner roonies with them and then I gotta do that damn gimmick one more time. Yeah, he's gotta he's gotta <laughs> dust that one off. But but he came out for them and uh <clears throat> it was it was a pretty cool segment, you know, uh doing the spinner roonies and all that. It was it was cool. Big E just kinda laid on his back and the other two spun him around. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, and now they will defend their tag team titles against, we're not quite sure yet, but because they're having two triple threat tag matches, right? Or just the yeah. one? Okay. Well, <clears throat> the the one we saw this week, not the week after, and not two nights after SummerSlam, but this past week, uh, well, yesterday, as a matter of fact, was The Bar won a triple threat match against... The good brothers of Luke Gallows and Carl Anderson, and of all people, friggin' Primo and Epico, the Colognes. Yeah. That was actually a good match, though, and Primo and Epico didn't look like jabronis. I couldn't believe it. I mean, we saw the Colognes on SmackDown. Monday night on Raw, we saw the Ascension take on Bobby Lashley in a handicap match. Like, we see the that Ascension was weird. and the Colognes in one week. Yeah, it was weird, but only one of them looked good, by the way. Yeah, but, uh, unfortunately. Yeah. Yeah, so that was that. That's what's going on with the SmackDown tag title picture now. 
Uh, we go on to Braun Strowman defending the Money in the Bank contract against Kevin Owens with the stipulation that if uh, Strowman could lose the contract by any means, <clears throat> that's uh, pinfall, submission, DQ, countout, whatever. Kevin Owens even got a new outfit for this. Uh, he was we- wearing a new t-shirt, wearing new trunks, uh, all the, uh, you know, with like Money in the Bank stuff on it. I think it said KO in the Bank or something like that. But he came out, boy, um... You want to even call this a match? Yeah, this... One minute, 50 seconds. So, think about that. One minute, 50 seconds. Braun Strowman wins with a running power slam. Just one. Then he wins. Uh, I give this match, uh, I believe, a half, yeah, half of an Uncle Dave. Yeah, this was a complete squash. I mean, I don't remember Kevin Owens getting any offense in whatsoever. I mean, they no. built this thing up like, oh, man, it's a good possibility. You know, Braun could lose the, you know, the money in the bank. Kevin Owens could get it. And, you know, man, there's a lot of, you know, a lot, a lot of speculation on what could happen. And <laughs> there's nothing to worry about. Yep. Nope. He just got squashed. End of the match. Boom. Uh, but I gave it a half of an Uncle Dave because it was, I don't know. I, I'm not going to give it zero. I don't I don't really, I mean, unless it's like a complete just pooper of a match, I'm not going to give it zero. But, yeah, so that's what it gets. Next, we've got the triple threat match between Carmella defending her SmackDown Women's Championship against uh, Charlotte Flair and Becky Lynch. The this ending. That probably created the biggest headline coming out of SummerSlam, I think. Yeah, it's um, crazy. Uh, let's get into it here. The ending saw Lynch applying her disarmor on uh, Carmella, only for Flair to hit natural selection on Lynch, and then pinned her to regain the title for a second time. After the match, Becky Lynch attacked Charlotte Flair just beating the tar out of her, threw her all over, beat her down, and she got a huge pop, huge, for, quote, turning heel. Yeah, I mean, I don't know what would have gotten the bigger reaction, what happened, or if she would have gotten the title. I mean, this was... I don't know. Uh, I mean, I, I'm not going to lie. I was happy to see it. I mean, that was... Yeah. I mean, I like Charlotte, too, but, I mean, come on. This is... Yeah, this was... I don't know. I really, I was so upset. I really was. But if it culminates in Becky finally getting the freaking title, then I won't be so mad. But, damn it. Like, why Charlotte again? She's... I mean, it's better than Carmella, but damn it. But Becky, um, yeah, she got a huge, she got a huge reaction for you know, and a, a, a huge cheering reaction, a positive reaction, of, quote turning heel and beating the tar out of her best friend. Yeah, she got a baby face reaction for that. <laughs> yeah. So um, you mentioned you know this about this hopefully ending with Becky getting the title. I mean, I right there with you. I don't really see a reason for Charlotte to have the belt again so soon. Yeah. You know, if she's not, you know, just, this could just be a transitional reign. I kind of hope, hope so. so. I mean, like I said, I like Charlotte, but I mean, she doesn't need the belt right now. I'm hoping they're testing the waters with Becky Lynch just to see how much, because, I mean, she's more over now. I, she's always over, but she, I think she's more over now than ever. Uh, I can't remember exactly what she did on SmackDown two nights later. Uh, can you recall? Uh, she basically cut a promo explaining... Ah, oh, that's right. Explaining why she did what she did, and once again, the crowd was behind her. She even tried to turn it on to the crowd, like, oh, you you guys weren't really with me and everything, and the crowd didn't care. They still cheered her and everything, and then yeah. Charlotte came out there, and then it just did resulted in a huge brawl between the two where they had the, the entire women's division had to come out there and separate the two of them. I, yeah, that's right. I remember that. Okay. Uh, you keep refreshing my memory here. Um, 
this week on SmackDown, she came out and attacked Charlotte from behind after Charlotte beat Carmella in a one-on-one match, made her tap out. Uh, Becky attacked her from behind, just beat the crap out of her. Crowd blows, freaking just loves it. They're cheering the hell out of her like she's Hulk Hogan, you know, back in like 1985 or something. And she, uh, she gets on the mic and tells Charlotte she's uh, coming for her title. She calls her the B word. Just a whole nine yards. Gets just gets like a huge ovation. Yeah. The only thing I can think of is um, Bruce Pritchard talked about this. He said when The Rock was, you remember when he was Hollywood Rock and he was mm-hmm. a heel? Uh and he would come out every week and just, like, crap on the audience or whatever, make fun of them. And he said Vince McMahon would get frustrated, and he would tell him, it's like, well, he can't be a heel. And the, the the phrase he used, he said, he's crapping on him, but he's crapping ice cream. <laughs> like, that's all I can think of, is, like, she's crapping on everybody, but she's crapping ice cream. They freaking love it. Some people, they just can't. You know, they reach a point where they just cannot be heel. I mean, they look at, like, what, uh, when they turned Steve Austin heel after WrestleMania, or at WrestleMania 17. I don't... And that was a huge flop. Nobody wanted to boo the... Nobody wanted to boo Austin. Nobody yeah. wanted to boo The Rock. And nobody's going to boo Becky Lynch. I mean, it just, it just well, can't happen. I think part of it is because she has a legitimate gripe here. Like... Yeah. And peop- everybody's asking, they're like, how is she the heel? She got screwed. And, like, legitimately, and everybody's been siding with her, and they're like, nope, heel. But, on the other hand, I think this is doing wonders for her character. I think I, I think it's great. Um, I like the side of Becky. I was always curious, because I've never seen Becky Lynch as a heel. I know she was for a little bit done in NXT, but I, I never right. saw that. So, yeah, you know, this is, I, I like the side of Becky Lynch. This is cool. Yeah, she, um, she's... She's just a great performer in and out of the ring, and she's, uh... I'll tell you now, this this past SmackDown that I watched, I don't know what it is, like, last night, um, that, you know, what what aired, I thought it was a fantastic show, top to bottom. I did, too. And the thing is, all these feuds on SmackDown, there are so many, like, personal feuds. Like, you know, like they make them, per- like, this one with Becky and Charlotte. It's a personal feud and it means something and it's great uh the stuff with we'll get to it with aj and samoa joe personal uh miz and daniel bryan which we'll get to personal you know it's all like just it's real stuff and it's great you know that's something that smackdown has had ever since the brand split it's like the it's like smackdown has a totally different feel from raw it's like it's more real yeah. like you mentioned and that's something that's kind of separated the two shows. And the SmackDown or in the SmackDown tag division, um, they don't have any like per se personal issues going on, but it's a fun division, and they always have great matches, no matter who the teams are. So yeah, they've got all the elite tag teams on SmackDown right now. Yeah, right. I know. I can't. I struggle to name more than two or three tag teams on Raw. And it's it's sad. I I think I don't know. Raw has some good mo- good moments, but all in all, eh, it's okay. But I'm guessing they've got different people writing for SmackDown. They got different people yeah. writing for Raw. But there's no way these can be the same. <laughs> yeah, no, yeah, it's it's completely different people. Two different two different teams. Um, and I think Triple H has more of a say on SmackDown. So you know that that should tell you something. Uh, but, uh, yeah, getting, uh, getting on with the show here, speaking of, uh, Styles and Joe, the next match is AJ Styles defending the WWE Championship against Samoa Joe, uh, first time I've seen these two do battle since TNA, so... Surprised at the placement, well, I really shouldn't be surprised at the placement of this match, the way, you know, the way they've had it with AJ Styles as WWE Champion again, which makes no sense to me, you guys, who I think is the best wrestler in the world carrying the biggest, you know, the, the most prestigious title in WWE. I don't care what they say about the Universal title. The WWE right. title's the biggest one. Exactly. And, yeah, it plays second fiddle to a title that we haven't seen in quite a while on a regular basis. So. I will say I'm not disappointed 
that it didn't close the show considering how the match ended. However, I, right. I am disappointed that it was so far down the card. Like, this was pretty low. Like, I mean, it was it was like the middle of the show, I think. So, I don't know. Um, but getting into it here in the climax, as Joe continued to talk, uh, AJ Styles had his wife and daughter in the crowd, and Joe got up on the table, on the announcer table, and said, uh, Daddy's coming home, or something like that. And Styles went and tackled him off the table, started beating the tar out of him. Uh, and he tackled him through the barricade off the table, actually. And then Styles attacked security personnel and struck Samoa Joe with a chair, causing the disqualification. Thus, Samoa Joe won the match. However, Styles retained the title. Kind of saw this coming because they needed to set up for something at Hell in a Cell. So, yeah, and somehow throughout that sequence, I think um, then Styles like hit his head bounce off the uh, steel steps or something. It ended up getting busted open in that uh, sequence. Yeah, I don't. I I didn't see how, but yeah, he got he got busted open uh, at one point, and he's all bloody and sweaty. And he goes out to he he tells his wife and daughter all oh, sorry, and he tries to pick up his daughter, and she doesn't want anything to do with him. <laughs> She's like reaching out for mom right away. It's like, Ugh. and I, like if you can see her, and he just tried to kill him. And like, what? <laughs> yeah. Well, then she looks at. Then she looks at him and she goes, "Daddy, you're bleeding." <laughs> like, yeah. yeah, he is. And then they just leave. I'm like, man. Um, last week on SmackDown, it became a big meme um, and a big GIF around everywhere, where Styles got attacked by Samoa Joe and just got the crap beat out of him on the stage. And then Joe grabbed the microphone, got in the camera, and he said, "Oh, Wendy." And uh, he said that uh, he was sending AJ Styles home sooner than later. And I guess he wants his rematch. This past week, uh, I'm, I'm trying to... Re- oh, Joe wasn't even there. He was uh, he was on the, the Tron, and he had a cell phone that he supposedly called AJ's wife with to uh, say that... He was going to show up for barbecue uh, within the next couple of days. So, first off, how did he get her number? I don't <laughs> like, know. That uh, I was wondering that too. Like in kayfabe land, yeah. How would he get her number? I mean, unless he stole her phone or something. I don't. Or, or his AJ's phone. Sorry. Um, other than that, I, I, I don't. I don't know. His new shirt. Like, I don't know, like, who the hell is, like, falling asleep at WWE with these t-shirts, man? These t-shirts that they're, they've they been coming out with lately, most of them have sucked. Like, Joe's just says, Joe, 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 Joe. <laughs> it's like, okay. That's all they can think of, right? Yeah, the Miz's, I think, just says A Lister on it. It's, like, super basic. They've come out with, like, a lot of really cheap, basic, crappy-ass T-shirts. Jeff Hardy was wearing one of his recently. It's just blue with a white um, picture that he painted, but it's, like, all, like, white outline, whatever. And it's just bleh. I do like the new Dean Ambrose shirt. I actually bought that here recently. Yeah. I think that one looks good. But yeah, that one's good. Um, I, just for, I just realized I forgot to uh, let everybody know. I gave... The triple threat women's title match for SmackDown. I gave that three Uncle Daves. It was a pretty good match. Probably the best match I've seen Carmella in. Uh, But when you're being carried by two of the best women's wrestlers in the world, you know, it's kind of hard to look bad. And this match, Styles and Joe, even though it had a funky ending, three and three-fourths Uncle Daves. And we're really getting technical now. Yeah, almost, it was almost four stars if it wouldn't have had a funky ending, and I know why. I'm not mad about the funky ending. Um, but if it would have had, like, a more clean, better ending, you know, conclusion, it probably would have got four stars. But it three and three-fourths for me. 
Now, I think not, we all knew heading into this match that this wasn't going to be a one and done thing. This is going to this is going to last a while. This feud. Oh yeah, especially when you know they kind of leaked it out that these two would be going at it in Hell in a Cell. So then we move on to probably my favorite match of the night. It's The Miz versus Daniel Bryan. Man, Daniel Bryan came out in Seahawks colors, and it was kind of (laughs) ugly. The Miz kind of recycled his old gear, his, like, white trunks and everything. But he had the ugliest, stupidest-looking glasses, like sunglasses I've ever seen. Just dumb. But... Yeah, I oh I, I almost forgot before we actually get into the match here, Elias came out, he promised a concert, and he went through all this hype and all this rigmarole. It took him like five minutes to set up this crap. He goes to play a new song, and for some reason the neck of his guitar snaps off right as he goes to play. It was weird. I don't know why it happened. And I was like, wouldn't he, like, wouldn't somebody have tested the guitar before he went out there? Wouldn't he have warmed up with the guitar? Like, what the hell was happened? That a, was that a botch, or was that supposed to happen? Was, I want to know. Well, I mean, it was clearly supposed to happen, but I was just like, what the F? Because you could see, he just, like, grips it and snaps it. And I'm like, what's going on? All I can think of is, where's JR at right, when you need him? Oh, my God, that guitar has been broken in half. My God, it had a family. But, yeah, so the Elias concert mercifully did not happen. Ooh, yeah, I'm totally disappointed that we didn't hear him. Oh, I know, he's your favorite guy, Kyle. <laughs> <laughs> well, before this actual match as well, the Miz runs into the B-team, former Miz Taraj backstage, and they say they're rooting for Daniel Bryan, and they're going to go out and celebrate on the town. And they said that, you know, we're no longer the Miz Taraj, we're the B team. And the B stands for Daniel Bryan. That's yeah. What they so, yeah. <laughs> They're so weird, but I love them. I love those weirdos. But yeah, the Miz is out there, and Maurice is at ringside. And this match went pretty well. They were on the apron at one point. Brian goes for a kick. Miz moves out of the way, and Brian kicks the ring post. And I was like, oh, gosh, that's it. But it wasn't quite it. Looked like Daniel Bryan was going to win there for a while, and Miz was on the outside, and Maurice slips him something uh, behind everybody's back. Bryan attempts a suicide dive, and the Miz punched him in the face with something that nobody saw. He hands it back to Maurice, and apparently it was brass knuckles. Mm-hmm. And then he throws, uh, or rather rolls, Bryan back into the ring and pinned him one, two, three. The Miz wins by nefarious means. Yet again. William Regal would be proud of that finish. Oh, yeah. Tell you, you want to talk about power of the punch. And it was his protege that got punched. Yeah. There's a bunch of William Regal references in this match. Who would have thunk it? But, yeah, so that's how that one ended. Clearly setting up for something in the future. Uh, do you remember what happened two nights later? Because I do not. It, uh, the Miz came out there. It actually started off the show. He went out to the ring, kind of promo. Uh, basically imitated Daniel Bryan when he had laid out. Bryan had to retire. You know, got all teary-eyed and everything. He's like, I asked her, you know, I'm, I'm officially announcing my retirement from facing Daniel Bryan, you know. To, That's right, to, yeah. And Bryan went out there and called him a coward and everything and said you had to hide behind your wife. And uh, But yeah, Maurice was out there with him and said something like, oh, you know, Daniel Bryan, they should call him Daniel Bella. And all of a sudden, Brie Bella makes her return. Yeah, yay. He goes up there and truly punches Miz right in the face. And That's right, yeah, because because Paige was mocking him about, you got punched in the face by Brie Bella. Uh, yeah, so, and it looks like they're setting up, because this past, uh, well, last night, Miz and Maurice were out there with Brian and Brie, and, well, I oh, no, I'm sorry, Brian and Brie were out there first. And then, yeah. uh, of all people, Andrade Cianamas and Zelina Vega come out, 
and they start getting into it, and then Miz and Maurice come out, and they get into it, and... Well, it, well, it, it, say it what? resulted in a, in a one-on-one match between uh, Daniel Bryan and Andrade C. and Almas, which I was looking forward to. I thought that'd be a good match, and it was up until... Like, up until the end of it, but... Yeah. Well, yeah, it all breaks down. Bryan gets the just the hell beat out of him. So Bree gets smacked around quite a bit by Maurice. And looks like they might be setting up either for a mixed tag or a three-way mixed tag. I, I, oh, it's, I don't know. No, it's going to be official. It's going to be a, they announced that uh, last week with SmackDown. It's going to be a mixed tag. Daniel and Bree taking on uh, Miz and Maurice. Ah. That's how I want to spell Okay. Don't know how many people were clamoring for that, but I don't know. I, it, be, I don't think it'll be a great match. I think it'll be fun to watch. But I'm hoping it's a way that maybe Bree can get the win on Maurice and, you know, and Miz can still, well, I never lost and whatever, and they can keep going with that. Yeah, I think this is going to be another long-term feud like we're seeing with AJ Styles and Samoa Joe. This one's, right. They've built this one for a while. This is another one I gave three and three fourths Uncle Dave's. So it was uh, it was something. It was I I, I enjoyed it. I, I like these two guys. Probably two of the best workers in the business, in my opinion, right now. Uh, this next match um, was something I can't remember if you called this one. Um, I sure didn't because we didn't see any teases for it or anything. But it was the return of the Demon Finn Balor against Baron Corbin. No, I did not call that. That took me by surprise as well. Awesome to see. Well, my my buddy Caleb, shout out to Caleb, he uh, he called it the night before. He was like, oh, at least we get the demon. I'm like, why would we get the demon? That doesn't make any sense. And, like, we did, and it was the best part yeah, about thought, this thing. I thought this match was going to be the bathroom break match of the night. I, <laughs> I was headed that way, but, yep. but I stuck around for... <laughs> Well, that the return of the demon was the only thing that really gave it a decent rating for me. I gave it a I gave it one Uncle Dave. Uh he just the demon comes out and just dominates and wins with a coup de gras. And then the next two weeks freaking Baron Corbin cries and says, "Well, uh Finn Balor didn't beat me, the demon beat me." Which is another thing. If I heard Michael Cole say the demon one more effing time on commentary, I was going to reach through my phone and punch him. I was like, dude, we get it. He's the demon. Shut up. Uh, but yeah, so, but, and then this. Oh, he's the demon? I thought that was, I thought he was doing his Ronald McDonald depression. I didn't know. Yeah, right. Well, they both wear face paint. Or do they? Maybe that's just Ronald's skin. We'll never know. Either way. Something ain't right about that damn clown who is smuggling burgers in his gigantic pants. But regardless, <clears throat> uh, yeah, so there, this two nights ago, Baron Corbin, who is now the acting general manager of Raw, as Kurt has been put on leave for, you know, inde- indefinitely, uh, he made a match between himself and not the demon, but just regular old Finn Balor. He used a chair and then said, oh, it's no disqualification, and he beat him. So this stupid feud continues. Why? No. I don't even remember why it even started. Because one is tall and one is not. That is the whole reason. Stupid. Oh, gosh. But anyway, I just I don't want to get heated here. Let's just move along. Um this was an interesting match. We get Shinsuke Nakamura defending the U.S. title against Jeff Hardy. Randy Orton did not get involved. So, that was... But he appeared. He did appear like a creeper, but he didn't get involved. But I Go well, we'll get to that here in a minute, Bon. Yeah. Well, Hardy attempted a swanton bomb on the freaking ring apron. And Nakamura moved, and he just crashed and burned. It's crazy. It was, um... Nakamura got then got Hardy back in the ring and performed a Kinshasa. Won the title clean as a whistle. He did go for the Pinshasa at one point and missed it. But other than that, and then right after the match, Hardy's down. Shinsuke leaves. Orton comes out and he teases like he's going to attack him. Then he turns around and he just leaves. 
And then in the backstage. I don't know how much, oh, I don't so, know how much money Randy Orton got paid to do that. Yeah, just to walk just show out. Up. I'm here. Hi, everybody. All right, I'm gone. Oil himself up, get, make himself look sweaty. Then he goes to the back and he does an interview where he says it's not the right night. Yeah, it's not the right night to smack him with a junk hand, I guess. But <laughs> then I, I can't remember what happened two nights later uh, on SmackDown. But uh, they had a match. It ended in disqualification and Jeff Hardy extracted some revenge on him. I think they went in somewhere into the crowd and they Hardy got... Uh, Orton onto a table and he climbed up somewhere. I forget what it was. It was a swanton bomb on Orton to the table. Oh, that's right. Yep. And then he came out. Jeff uh, pronouns, pal. Uh, Jeff came out on SmackDown last night. I think he had. Did he have Orton or RKO or something like that painted on his RKO. face? RKO. Yeah, yeah. Okay. RKO. Yeah, that was painted in his on his face and. Him and I, I can't even remember all what happened between him and Orton um, last night. But he was. Uh, I think it's just a war of words this time. Yeah, yeah, they just BS'd for a while. But <clears throat> continuation of the feud, it's got me interested. I'll say that it's it's a weird feud, probably the weirdest one we got on SmackDown right now. But it Which is what is it is. It's gonna be. Um, but they did announce it's gonna be uh, Jeff Hardy and Randy Orton. At Hell in a Cell. That's inside right. Inside yeah. Hell in a Cell. That's going to be great, because I remember he said he challenged Orton to Hell in a Cell, then he did Orton's pose, which was pretty cool. And this is going to be the first Hell in a Cell match that Jeff Hardy's ever been in, which is hard to believe all yeah. the crazy stuff he's seeing do. I know, it blows my mind. Well, and you think he's his crazy ass is jumping off that damn thing. Oh, yeah. He can't let Shane McMahon one-up him. Uh, but, all right, well, he, he might jump off it twice, because he's that freaking crazy. Yeah. Uh, but this match, I gave it two and a half Uncle Dave's. Not a bad outing by these two. And that crazy, uh, swanton on the apron was just nuts. Now we get to the second last match of the night. It's the Raw Women's, uh, title match. Alexa Bliss defends against Ronda Rousey. This one was nuts. Rhonda looked almost like a female Wolverine with her paint and then the stuff she, she had. Looks like, she looks like a raccoon. <laughs> I was thinking I, I was thinking with her with her eye makeup and with her the stuff on her gloves, she almost looked like Wolverine, but I don't know. But before they ever came out, Natalia's music hits, she gets a huge ovation. She came out to the ring wearing her her father Jim Neidhart's jacket. The crowd just gives her a standing ovation. It was it was awesome to hear and awesome it, to see. It was the same, from what I understand, it was the same jacket that um, Jim Neidhart wore. I forget it, what pay per view it was back in sometime in the early nineties when the hit when the uh, Hart Foundation won the tag team titles. It was uh, SummerSlam. It was his. Uh, oh, it was SummerSlam. Okay. Yeah, I can't remember which which one. I want to say ninety two. But I, I think I'm wrong. I, I actually I guarantee I'm wrong. But anyway, it was his jacket from SummerSlam, which was you know, it had double meaning there. But uh, yeah, so this match went how it should have went. Alexa kept playing keep away, didn't want anything to do with Ronda. Uh, Rousey really dominated the entire match. Bliss really got no offense. Uh, she hit two of those spinning Samoan drops that she does. On the second one, she picked her, she kind of reversed something and picked her up, and you could hear her yell, you ready? And Alexa Bliss, I think, yelled, yeah, or something like that, and then she hit it. Uh, very audible, even though cr- the crowd was going nuts. At one point, she was playing keep away so much, Ronda just sat, like, uh, Indian style in the center of the ring. Is that politically correct to say Indian style? I don't know, cross-legged. Uh, does it matter? Coming. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. We say a bunch of stupid stuff on this podcast. But regardless, she sat that way in the center of the ring, and Alexa went in and tried to give her a a uh, sleeper hold, and that just pissed Ronda off, and I think that's what led to the second spinning slam there. 
But she eventually got some arm bar. Where she's yanking back on the arm, making Alexa scream. Then she locked in the arm bar, or the, the arm breaker. Got the win. And she's the first woman to ever be a UFC and WWE champion. Natalia got in and celebrated with her. And for some reason, the freaking Bella Twins got in to celebrate with her. That was yeah, they weird. had a backstage interview. Like, no mask and no wire. They they're like, oh, we're gonna be here to witness, you know, Ronda Rousey become the women's champion and yeah, whatever else it was. So yeah, they decided to throw them in there, which eh, whatever. Yeah, I just okay. Uh, I gave this one one and a half, Uncle Dave's. The next night on Raw, uh, she gets brought out to the ring by Stephanie McMahon, and then she slaps Steph. I, she slapped Stephanie in the armbar, didn't she? Like, again? Or did she just, yeah. like, judo throw her? I think she did both. Stephanie, better in the armbar again. Okay. Well, but, how old they make Stephanie McMahon think that all you have is to her buddy-buddy after everything they've gone through, and yet it's the same thing happens to her every time. I know. Yeah, it's crazy. But the legacy, the, uh, the, uh, not the not the legacy. The uh, story, I guess, goes on. Uh, Alexa Bliss has announced she is re- uh, invoking her rematch clause at Hell in a Cell against Ronda Rousey. I hope it goes the same way. I don't really... If they make Alexa champ again, that's going to be so stupid and unrealistic in so many ways. The only way that's going to be realistic is if which I can see, this This is how I see um, Ronda Rousey losing the women's title whenever that happens. It's Stephanie McMahon getting involved and screwing her out of it. That's yeah. the only logical explanation. Even then, like, come on, there's no way little Alexa is going to do anything to her. It right. would kind of take away a lot of her credibility. But, anyway, yeah, and Alexa uh, will be taking on Trish Stratus at Evolution. So, yay, I guess. Uh, I'm looking forward to it. Should be good, but I think Trish is a better worker. But, I mean, I don't know. We'll see. The match... That's going to be fun for Alexa Bliss, because I've heard her say in interviews, like, people have asked her, like, you know, who... You know, who... I guess she can work a match with anybody of her choice. It'll be a dream match, but usually, like, the first words to come out of her mouth is Trish Stratus. So there you go. Yeah. Well, let's. Uh, I know you got to wrap things up here, so let's uh, let's move along with this main event here. By the way, that that match was only four minutes long, lasted about as long as it should have. Same thing with the main event: six minutes, ten seconds. Brock Lesnar defending the Universal Title against Roman Reigns. This one was crazy. Uh, in the main event, Brock Lesnar, as I said, defending the Universal Title against Roman Reigns. Before the match began, Braun Strowman came out to announce that he was going to cash in on the winner and remained at ringside. A lot of people said this was so that, you know, to distract the crowd so that they wouldn't boo and try to hijack the show again. As soon as... Oh, ma- that's what it was. It worked. Yeah. Yeah, the crowd was hot for this one. As soon as the match began, Reigns surprised Lesnar with three Superman punches and three spears. Uh, and then Lesnar applied a guillotine choke, only for Reigns to counter into a spine buster. Lesnar performed two German suplexes on Reigns. As Reigns attempted another spear, Lesnar avoided it, resulting in Reigns accidentally performing a suicide dive out onto Braun Strowman. Lesnar then performed an F5 onto Strowman outside and then beat the hell out of him with a briefcase and whipped it up onto the stage. And then uh, Lesnar attacked Strowman with a chair, just laying him out. So no cash in tonight, folks. But he gets in the ring... And is looking at Strowman, turns around, boom, fourth spear, one, two, three. Lesnar's reign of 504 days is over. Quite surprised that it lasted, that it didn't last, that the match itself didn't last that long. Yeah. I mean, I shouldn't be, given that it's a Brock Lesnar match, but. Right. Well, just given what we've seen from these two, we've had some pretty long drag out battles, like what we saw at WrestleMania. So, right, kind of an underwhelming finish. Yeah, 
but I think they just kind of wanted to wrap things up. And I mean, and one thing I noticed, Brock Lesnar is still, a, you know, he's always a huge man, but you can tell he's losing a lot of weight getting ready for UFC again. He, oh, yeah. He looked, like, by Brock Lesnar's standards, he looked anorexic because he looks like he's just been starving himself and dropping a ton of weight, lost a lot of muscle mass, um, but he's still a humongous freaking human being. He's just a freaky dude. But Oh, yeah. This match I gave two and a half Uncle Dave's. Cool way to go home. Uh, speaking of Uncle Dave, him and Brian Alvarez tried claiming on Wrestling Observer Radio that, oh, the crowd was furious in this finish. No, they weren't. One, I could hear it plain as day over the network. People were cheering. They were happy. And the second thing was uh, Greg and Ramon were there, and they said, yeah, no, the crowd was uh, not even fifty-fifty. They were mostly popping for the for the title change. Yeah, they were just happy that the belt got off Lesnar. Exactly. I mean, they could have put, I mean, put that damn thing on Doink the Clown if they wanted to. to <laughs> the crowd. I mean, they just wanted it off Lesnar, and they wanted it on somebody who's going to be there every week. Right. And it was. I don't know. I thought it was great. It was. It was. It was good. Um, mm-hmm. All in all, a great SummerSlam. Great weekend. Uh, the continuation of this, real quick, uh, while we wrap this up here, on Raw, Strowman attempted to cash in on Roman Reigns again, and who should come out but Dean Ambrose and Seth Rollins in full Shield gear, and they triple power bomb uh, Strowman through the announce table. And this past week, Strowman gave acting general manager constable uh, baron corbin the briefcase and he said here's your contract and he said he's cashing in on roman at hell in a cell in hell in a cell so there you go that's the end of that but uh yeah i don't know good couple of weeks in uh in uh, wwe world right yes it has been very entertaining uh not just the pay-per-views, but the brawls and smackdowns that have followed so far have been really good. So I like the uh, direction we're headed so far. Yep. It's been a been a crazy couple of weeks, and it's going to be a crazy rest of the month in uh, Vinny's duplexes of suplexes. So good times. I, I'm i more enjoying SmackDown than Raw, but Raw is still mm, pretty decent, I you know, all in all. Looking forward to it. I wish we could go to Raw next week. Yeah, so, I know. Shawn Michaels is going to be there. I know. I thought I, heard, I, I thought I heard The Undertaker. That would be awesome. Possibly. Yep, Triple H came out last week on Raw to talk about why he was going to face The Undertaker one more time at Super Showdown in Melbourne, Australia. It's going to be good. In front yeah, of... In Columbus, in the, we're all in Columbus next week. That's why I'm like kind of kicking myself. Yeah, I know. That that would be awesome. Labor Day, I get the day off, so But uh yeah, a couple matches announced for Evolution. I don't know if this is I think this is a rumor. I don't know if it's official official yet, but they're saying of all freaking things, uh Ronda Rousey might take on Nikki Bella, which Yeah, I've heard that rumor. Ugh, I don't know why. And the other one is Asuka versus Kelly Kelly. That blows my freaking mind. I think one that's been made official is uh, the Riot Squad taking on, like, the Bellas and Ronda Rousey. Is that, I don't know. I know they're going to be involved. They're going to be oh. well, a woman tag. I was going to say, if that's, is that, if that's the match. Or is that at the uh, Australian show? That might be the Australian show. Okay. I I would have to check, but I don't know. But anyway, um, yeah, I guess you, I know you got to go, so we'll wrap this up and let you go uh, when we come back on the other side of this promo break here, letting you know about another great uh, podcast here on Drama City Productions Podcast Network. I will go into All In and kind of run down that card for this weekend and also talk about my experiences on Fire Pro Wrestling World so far. Thank you for joining me, Kyle. Not a problem. And we will talk to the rest of you on the other side of this break. 
Small Town Mentality Podcast with your host, Ben. A podcast about nothing and everything. A podcast where we get together with friends, drink beer, and see where the conversation takes us. We don't edit. We don't care what people say. It's small town people with a small town mentality. It gets offensive at times. Lots of swearing and a whole lot of not caring. Available everywhere you get podcasts. You can find us on Twitter at STM Pod, on Instagram at STM Podcast, and on Facebook at Small Town Mentality Pod. We'll see you there. Well, if you've all hung on this long, thank you very much. I appreciate it. We've covered a lot of content on this podcast so far. Uh, I know we've been talking all NXT and WWE so far. That's the main focus of this episode. Uh, But I kind of wanted to run down a couple of the other things before we wrap it up here officially for the week. I'll try to keep it as brief as possible. And also let you know about the list, bro, for the return of Greg next week. We're still working to see if we can get Ramon hooked up with us. Uh, But definitely Greg will be uh, involved real quick uh, running down the card so far for all in right now as it stands in no particular order uh, the Briscoe brothers Jay and Mark Briscoe are taking on SoCal Uncensored the team of Frankie Kazarian and Scorpio Sky and the reason it's those two is because Christopher Daniels is going to be taking on Stephen Amell Arrow himself, baby, from the CW Network. So, uh, I'm not sure that's the best use of Christopher Daniels, but I don't know. This the, the match could be better than I'm giving it credit for. And Daniels is amazing. So, there is a 15-person battle royal to determine the number one contender for the Ring of Honor World Championship. It's called the Over Budget Battle Royal. Uh, let's run down all the announced participants for that battle royal thus far. We got Punishment Martinez, Brandon uh, Cutler, Marco Stunt, Jimmy Jacobs, Billy Gunn, Brian Cage, Ethan Page, Colt Cabana, Rocky Romero, Moose, and Jordan Grace. The only female on the match so far. She is a... She's a... More like a uh, weightlifting kind of beefier, you know, and I don't mean that in derogatory term. Nobody take it bad, but, you know, she's one of them. She can hang with the guys kind of kind of gals. She's uh, a stronger, you know, woman got some got some uh, muscle to her. Uh, and uh, but yeah, so that's announced so far there. You know, teasing, well, Neville might be involved, or, you know, Pac on the indies. Maybe, maybe not. Never know. We, uh, we'll have to wait and see. Other matches here. We got Jay Lethal will be defending the Ring of Honor Championship against whoever wins that over-the-budget battle royal. Or, excuse me, over-budget battle royal. Madison Rain will take on Britt Baker, Chelsea Green, and Tessa Blanchard in a four-way match. Four very talented, very beautiful women. We've got, uh, let's see, sorry, I'm trying to, my first time actually running through the whole card here. Joey Janela is going to take on Hangman Page, baby, in a Chicago street fight. That should be interesting. Uh, Kazuchika Okada is facing the villain Marty Skrull. And we've got a six-man tag match. It's Rey Mysterio. Phoenix and Bandito versus the Golden Elite. Matt Jackson, Nick Jackson, and Kota Ibushi. That should be a damn good match. It's going to be a spot fest from hell, but it's going to be, well, I should say a spot fest from heaven. It's going to be going to be crazy. It's going to be great to see. We've got Kenny Omega versus Pentagon. Very much, very much looking forward to seeing that one. That should be really good. It's a, it's one of the most hyped matches on the card, and the main event of the night. Nick Aldis defends the NWA World's Heavyweight Championship against Cody Rhodes. That's going to be a good match. I love Nick Aldis. I, I love Cody Rhodes. I think these two will have a great match. I think their their styles will complement each other very well. It's going to be a good match. Looking forward to seeing that. So that's what you can expect from All In 
on Saturday. StarCast is the day before on Friday. It's going to be on Fight TV. Uh, you can get it on the Fight app. And this, uh, All In, will be on the Fight app. It will be on um, the Honor Club. It will be broadcast right afterwards. They're going to rebroadcast it in Japanese on uh, New Japan World. And the first hour before it starts from 6 to 7 on WGN America is going to be called All In Zero Hour. Check that out. I will, if I possibly can. It's going to be a big night in pro wrestling, ladies and gents. It's going to be a historic night from uh, Chicago, Illinois. Uh, they are sp- they've got some weird sponsors I'll run down here in a second. But it's going to be September 1st at the Sears Center, technically in Hoffman Estates, Illinois, a suburb of Chicago. But it's Chicago. The sponsors are Cracker Barrel, Hot Topic, Pro Wrestling Tees, and TGI Fridays. Cracker Barrel and TGI Fridays are the ones that just throw me, make me laugh. Earl Hebner is actually going to be on this show as a referee. So is Jerry Lynn. That's crazy. Uh, Todd Sinclair. And they've got Alicia Atout and Sean Mooney as the interviewers. That's pretty cool. The commentary team is going to be Don Callis, Excalibur, and... Ian Riccoboni, Riccoboni, I, I I apologize, I've never heard of him before. And the ring announcers are going to be Justin Roberts and Bobby Cruz. By the way, uh, Rick, Riccoboni, uh, or Riccoboni, whatever the hell, I guess, is the commentator for Ring of Honor, and I never knew that. I didn't know the guy's name. He's not terrible, though. So, yeah, that's what you can expect from All In. Not going to give any predictions, because I really... I have no, I have no idea. I, I, I really can't um, hazard a guess at this point. But uh, before, real quick, before we wrap up, also want to remind you all: definitely patronize us, help us out, y'all. We have, uh, we've got some great swag for you. One more time, just letting you know about pod. Uh, I'm sorry, uh, Redbubble.com forward slash people forward slash pod rest society great stuff you can get a lot of great shirts there uh or mugs travel mugs uh clocks try to think of all the stuff you can get tank tops if you want a pillow let me know if you want a blanket let me know if you want well the only one i won't do is leggings because the logos don't look good on leggings it's it's difficult to you know, work that. Uh, hoodies, you can get a hoodie. You know, it's a lot of cool stuff. Let me know. If we do not offer it, let me know, and we will start offering it. A lot of great stuff. Like I said, red, redbubble.com forward slash people forward slash pod rest society. Lots of good stuff there. Uh, last thing I want to touch on before we wrap up, I just bought Fire Pro Wrestling uh, World for PlayStation 4. So far, good game. One thing I will complain every, uh, complain about every single freaking time I try to create a wrestler, it boots me out and says that there's an error uh, and whatever. It's a glitch in the game. I don't know if anybody else is having the same problem. If you are, please let me know. Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, whatever the hell, uh, whatever way you want to, you choose to get a hold of me. I just want to know, am I the only one having this damn problem? Every time I try to create a freaking wrestler, says there's an error and boots me out to the to the main PlayStation home screen. And then I have to reboot the whole freaking game. It's pissing me off. I wasted an hour and a half uh, creating a guy on two different occasions combined. It was an hour and a half. Just wasted my freaking life, and I'm pissed. I did the... Um. Oh, the uh, the, the training. Because at first I tried playing the game cold. Never played it before, and I was terrible. I couldn't understand it. I didn't get it. I went into the training missions. Boy, howdy! If you've never played this game before, do yourself a favor. Do those training missions. They're frustrating as all hell, but they are useful as all hell, and they're great. I will. I, I like the fact it's not a realistic game at all. Like with the movements and the 
you know, just how everything works. It's not very realistic. However, Aaron, you know, when the models are 8-bit, whatever, they're not fantastic-looking models. But still fun. It was a little addicting. Uh, very frustrating. And I'll, t- I'll say this. I'll compliment the game. Each wrestler that they have has a different personality. They wrestle a certain way. There's, you know, guys that will, you know, bite, scratch, claw, rub your eyes, hit you with weapons, whatever, and they're just like they cheat the whole match if they can get away with it, and they'll bust you open if they can. Uh, The blood looks okay in the game. Uh, The, like I said about the wrestler, the personalities, you know, there's wrestlers who are, you could tell, legitimate wrestlers, and they'll suplex you and do submissions a lot and stuff like that. And it's really cool and not, you know, something you don't see. That's the only thing, if I could port one thing over into the WWE games on 2K, that would be it. Um, the I have not done the Road to Glory, I think that's what it's called. I have not done that yet. I'm working on it. I want to do it. Tomorrow is my day off. So you bet your bottom dollar that my butt is going to be firmly planted on this couch. And I'm going to be doing that faux show. Uh, and I'll let you know a little bit more about the game if there's any anything new uh, I have to add next week when uh, we talk with Greg. So, yeah, that's basically it. Uh, if you're on the fence about buying it, um, if you have the money, I'd say buy it. If you have to stretch the budget... Mm, I, I I wouldn't push it. You know what I'm saying? It's it's a good game. It's not like the most fantastic thing ever. I know um, this podcast isn't going to be super clean and everything. I'm going to do my best, but uh, running low on time because of Kyle's schedule and my schedule, and like I said, kind of getting acclimated after uh, vacation. Everything and everything. This is my first week back to work after vacation and being home. So. We're trying to wrap everything up as uh, quickly as possible. Had a lot going on. So I'm hoping this is as clean as humanly possible. Next week will be a lot better, though. With with Greg, things will be more back in order and kind of moving and and, uh, shaking and all that. Uh, Our list for next week, bro, uh, Greg and I will go over the top 10 most shocking wrestling moments of all time. Just, that's... Big league, huge, shocking wrestling moments. Got it in there. The Trump reference. Boom. Uh, anyway, yeah. So that uh, that does it for this podcast. Thank you all for joining me today. Have a very fun and safe. Right. I emphasize that safe. Three day Labor Day weekend. It's gonna be good. I get Labor Day off. I hope you do too. Enjoy it. Enjoy the last unofficial weekend of summer. And have a good time. We'll see you next week. Later. This has been a Drama City production.